Yes, Bank's bad loans doubled in the second quarter as the Reserve Bank of India pulled up the lender for under-reporting. The stock is down close to over 7% today as brokerages raise their concerns over what is being seen as a trust deficit. Yes, Bank CEO Rana Kapoor, however, said that the lender did not have adequate curing time, as he called it, between the two divergence announcements, and that's what hurt them the most. Listen in. The last divergence was communicated to us as recently as March of 2017 for the period ended March 16. So by the time we, you know, completed our discussions, it was almost like the end of the year. And this particular, you know, uh, review has been practically with a gap of only a few months and therefore there's not been enough curing time within the system all right, that's uh, Rana Kapoor uh, giving his explanation. But Andy Mukherjee of Bloomberg Gadfly says, oh, no, no, yes, bank, you can't explain it away that easily. Andy, good afternoon. What's your take on this story? Good afternoon, Ira. What did he say? Fueling time. Curing. Curing, Curing time. time. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, yes. So, uh, well, no. <laughs> uh, I mean... One billion dollars, how can you just explain that away so easily? Because uh, that's the quantum of uh, the so-called divergence. Uh, I don't like that word at all because I think we should be using a stronger word. Uh, uh, that's, that's the quantum that we are talking about here. Um, now, I don't understand how uh, you can have such a divergence of assessment between the central bank and the bank based on, or, or, you know, about NPLs, which is, which it, it should be, I mean, Ira, correct me if I'm wrong, but it should be a fairly straightforward process, right? Either you have, uh, you are, your loan is being serviced the way it, 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 it's supposed to be uh, getting serviced, or it's not. So is it really that much a matter of opinion, Ira? I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm turning the uh, tables around here. Yeah. But uh, am I wrong in saying that? saying this? No, Andy. So, you know, I, I had a discussion with uh, somebody who, uh, you know, I'll have to leave unnamed because it was an off-record discussion, uh, who said that there is some amount of uh, sort of, you know, human intervention, if I can put it that way, in large corporate accounts and determining whether those have turned bad or not. This person said that with retail and SMEs, it's very clearly that 90-day trigger and you are out. Uh, there is some ambiguity, he said, that you know, in terms of explaining large corporate accounts. So I went back to uh, the income recognition rules this morning to read exactly where the ambiguity would come in. I found three aspects of those income recognition rules. One was, uh, you know, what the RBI mm -hmm. is saying that asset classification has to be done by borrower and not by instrument. Uh, and we know that the RBI has told banks that you know, you guys are only looking at your loan account, but look at what this borrower is doing across the sector. So I think that is one possibility that banks are still continuing to look at it only okay. in terms of their loan account. Uh, the second is, uh, you know, there is a place where they talk about consortium agreements. Again, here, the RBI advises that they look at the record of recovery as opposed to, again, just the recovery in that one instrument with that one bank. Uh, and the third place that the RBI says mm -hmm. in those norms is that you have to take into account the erosion in value of security that you may be holding against the loan account. Uh, so I think, you know, those are some, uh, you know, Harsha and Andy, right. some areas where ambiguity could perhaps slip in, mm. uh, you know, to be fair to the banks. But, you know, when the regulator has said that you have to take the strictest definition of NPA, you should take the strictest def definition of NPA. Fair enough. Just, just one, one... Fair enough. One, one, yes. One, and, one, and, and... Sorry. Uh, yeah. One, and if I can just sort of uh, come back to the piece that you've written. Uh, two specific questions that yes. are being raised to the bank. Uh, can you sort of explain the context yes. and why you've raised those two questions? Well, look, I have been sort of banging the table about this price to truth ratio, as I, mm -hmm. as I call it, about uh, some of these, uh, you know, pr uh, private run uh, banks, uh, which were supposed to be better governed than the state run uh, banks. Um, even today, when you, when you look at uh, Bank of Baroda, which I, as Darshan was uh, telling us is one of the stocks that Goldman is uh, recommending, even today, uh, the Bank of Baroda is only available at a forward uh, price to book value of, of about one, whereas uh, after today's price action, yes, it's still about 2.3 uh, forward price to book. 
Now, so therefore, we need to be absolutely certain whether these uh, private run banks actually are giving us a truthful picture of their balance sheet or not. Mm. Uh, so the two questions therefore is that where is this one billion dollar figure suddenly, this divergence figure suddenly coming from mm. uh, and whether uh, the, the the management credit committee. Now, the management credit committee has Mr. Rana Kapoor on it. It has the chief risk officer on it. It has the, the risk heads, the product heads, the business heads. It has all of them. And it is actually their job to be monitoring the NPAs, to, mon to be monitoring the stressed accounts. And, you know, did they, did they all of them just miss it? And what about the auditor? Uh, that's one question I didn't raise specifically in my piece, but I would like to ask it here. What about the auditor? When you when you go back and look at the March 31st result, it has you know his stamp, it has his signature saying that uh, you know uh, in his opinion the uh, the account presents a truthful picture of the bank's balance sheet and profit uh, for the year. And now, once again, he is putting his you know, seal and he's putting his initials on a piece of paper which says, by the way, here is the divergence according to what the RBI assessed our NPLs or the bank's NPLs and you know, what we had then said. Now, so are all of the, you know, I mean, capitalism is supposed to work based on, you know, or, or, or on, on the shoulders of institutions. Are, if, are all the institutions failing? If they are failing, then probably it's time for the regulator to step in and take some more drastic measures. I mean, just you know, just telling banks that you know you go back and report more truthfully is probably not going to be enough. Absolutely, Andy. And just brief mention of the fact that we had the former ICAI chief with us earlier this morning, uh, and he was equally harsh. He said, uh, "Bank managements, bank boards." auditors uh, and even the RBI supervisors who until now had you know sort of let this pass uh, need to be uh, you know taken to task and you need higher penalties we saw that minimal six crore penalty that was imposed he also said that you need higher uh, penalties there all right Andy, actually, Andy, Andy, uh, I mean, the six crore doesn't cut it okay we, we run out of time Andy, we lovely with it thank you so much indeed for joining us Andy Mukherjee joining us from from Hong Kong, Bloomberg Gadfly, you want to read that piece that he's written, that's uh, on the homepage of BloombergQuint.com.